should have played Jack Payne the way the game went at the end. Somebody who's with a little little lad with great creativity and can you know open a can of beans with his left foot. So this season's longest unbeaten run finally comes to an end. The Blackburn Rovers stumble against the Plymouth Argyle side and fall right back into playoff territory. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right folks, back once again with another match review this time, picking apart the shambolic away loss to Plymouth Argyle and that loss my friends uh, puts us right back in playoff territory. Now before we get into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. And right now, I don't even know if you want to because uh, it's nothing nothing to get excited about. In fact, when you look at the table, it's actually quite concerning. Both Wigan and Shrewsbury have gains in hand on us and that lead, be it only two points at the moment, could be as well as five uh, for second place. And I don't even know the math for first place. I'm not even going to bother sweating about it because it's 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 nothing of concern right now. But I am concerned that we might get we might actually lose touch with Shrewsbury if we don't turn things around in our next game. Uh, but let's talk more about the, the the result today than in fact the stuff that's coming ahead. Because uh, Rovers were absolutely well. For this was our worst performance uh, this season. The worst, probably our worst performance under Tony Mowbray. Because I didn't feel that we actually had any efforts of any significance or chances whatsoever in the whole 90 minutes. Uh, and Mowbray has actually uh, held his hand up and he actually admitted that he should have rested or at least changed the lineup a little bit because uh, it was very defensive, very cautious. And uh, I think the only chance I recall, I think was an Armstrong chance, if I, if I can remember, but it was, it was, it was horrific. Uh, so that boy needs a goal. But anyway, 2-0 uh, goals on the 25th minute by Lamieras and 37th minute by Taylor. So they went into the break 2-0 up. And after that, yeah, it was a yawn fest in regards to Blackburn Rovers. Plymouth were in party mode. And, uh, and, and in fact, they looked like the side that was uh, buying, uh, fighting for the top of the table. And we looked like the mid-table average mediocre side. And it just got worse. The whole day never panned out for us, Wigan. Easy as you like, uh, their 2 0 victory over Gillingham and then Shrewsbury. They, they, they made it a little bit of uh, dodgy territory, but they snuck a winner right at the, right at the death, uh, and that really just changed the whole mode. I, I, I could have accepted a defeat if Shrewsbury had uh, failed to win, but none of that happened. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. Uh, we dominate possession, and in fact, according to BBC, we had 11 shots. Uh, and four of them were on target. To be honest with you, none of those are in my recollection. Okay, there might have been a bit of a couple, a couple of scrambles in there from some corners and whatnot. But to be honest with you, it was that dull. I can't remember anything. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't really want to remember anything because it was piss poor. Anyway, we had 52% possession compared to 48 of Plymouth. Plymouth had only had five shots, two of them on target. And those two probably went in the back of the net. Uh, one corner and 11 fouls for Plymouth. And look at... Oh, it's just so miserable. Um, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I think Plymouth are a quality side. Uh, you know, I've got much respect for the town of Plymouth or city of Plymouth, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, and I hope they do well this season. But uh, I just I just want us out of this division so badly. Um, yeah, it's miserable. Anyway, let's move on a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more. But anyway, here is the starting 11 for Plymouth Matthews in goal. Threkeld, Viner, Bradley, Sawyer, Ness, Fox, Saktrovic, Carey, Taylor, and Ramirez. And here are the lineup for Blackburn Rovers. Raya in goal, Nayimbi, Downing, Williams, Bell, Conway, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Armstrong, and Graham. And here are the player ratings. I've never gone so low. That's how bad it was. Ryan with a six, Nayimbi with a six, Downing with a four, Williams with a five, Bell with a six, Conway with a four, Bennett with a five, Small with a six, Dak with a six, Armstrong with a four, and Graham with a four. I'm being generous as well for Dak and Smallwood, to be honest with you. I, li I like them too much. I give them a, an extra Brucey bonus point because I like them so much. Um, Ryan with a six because he saved a couple of decent uh, efforts, maybe. It was just the worst, absolute worst. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, I think we take on Old Oldham next week, or, uh, and that's how he would. Um, I, you know, I, I fancied this game, I really did. Despite the long road trip for the boys, I thought, you know, away days, Blackburn have been pretty decent away. I thought we would get this game between our teeth, 
and uh, and actually sneak a couple of goals ourselves and come away with the three points. In fact, I was dreading more the Oldham game than I was the Plymouth game. But now we bring Oldham to Ewood Park next Saturday and hope that we pick up a win because a win is what we need. We can't start drawing these games anymore. And I'd like to see Mowbray. I, I, I'm not I'm not usually the, the, the biggest fan of chucking everything uh, at the guys straight off the bat, but I think it's, it's needed. Oldham are 21st in the division. We are now third. So really, we should go out there and we should, we should hit them for six and put on a monstrous display. But I'm going to talk more about the Oldham game in a couple of days' time as we preview that game. Uh, but really frustrated and, and just the effort. I don't know. I don't know if it was Blackburn were that poor or Plymouth were that good. It, I think we were that poor that we made Plymouth look that good. Um, uh, yeah, the substitutions uh, at halftime, bringing off Graham, our informed striker. I, I would have. I would have done something different. I would have probably. I would have kept Smallwood on. Bennett was was wank. Uh, I would have taken him off. Taken Conway off, uh, and I would have brought on Payne and maybe Samuel. And then kind of fixed up a formation to suit those players. Uh, it, it was just piss poor. So we were going to lose eventually. Um, I just didn't expect it to be against Plymouth. No disrespect to Plymouth. They were a decent side and now they're looking pretty. And they could eventually make a run for the playoffs. You never know. Uh, they've got their shit together now. And they did pick a point of us. Take a point of us at uh, Ewood. Uh, with then, and, and that's another game. So they, they did a number of us this season. They picked up four points against us. So fair play to them. Um, as for Rovers, we really need to... You know, Wigan look a class above at the moment. Uh, they don't look like stopping. Um, the game against Wigan at Ewood Park. Uh, at this minute, at this moment in time, could mean nothing. It could mean absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, we could beat them and they could still gallop, uh, walk away with the, with the title. We need to get our shit together now. And we've hope, got to hope for, the, for Shrewsbury and we're going to stumble a little bit um, over the next few games. I know Shrewsbury do take on Plymouth next weekend. I'm not sure who we're going to take on. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, Argyle get the bit between Seif and, uh, and it's, at, it's at Shrewsbury. So, you know, I'm not optimistic. I'm hopeful. Uh, I know that uh, there is a couple of cheeky games that we could expect someone to do us favours and we shouldn't be relying on other teams doing us favours, but we are. We're in that position and uh, if the season ended right now, we'll be in the playoffs and I do not want to be in the playoffs. Anyway, you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. What has the gaffer been saying shortly after kickoff? Um, that's no excuses. I think uh, we knew it was going to be a tough game. They're in a good run of form. They've um, got some good players. I just think we didn't really get to the, the levels that we've been at recently. Um, you know, over the last two or three weeks, the team's been exceptionally high energy, high level. This is the third game this week, and, and first half particularly, we were miles away from where we've been. And um, you know, credit to them, they a really solid team, work hard, uh, got some individuals with a bit of quality, and um, yeah, so we could still be playing now and not scored really. It was that's some frustration for us. And first half, lack of. Lack of intensity that we've been playing at second half, lack of creativity around the box. But um, listen, that's first defeat in 19 games, and so we can't be too harsh on them. They have to get the balance between rest and working hard this week and get ready to, to go again. Let's see if we can go another, I don't know, when we've got left in 16, 17 games. Let's see how we get on. Now, listen, it happens. Them, you know, I, I know Ruben well, I've managed him for a year and a half. Currently, he's. Um, you know they can fly over the bar out the stand, or they can fly in the top corner. It was, it was a great strike. Um, yeah, listen, a bit frustrating today. It's, it's. Um, I think Paul probably slipped for the second goal as well, and yet we we overcommitted in midfield and, and got, got counted on some of that. We've been pretty good at denying teams. Um, so listen, there's no excuses. I think well done to them. They worked really hard. They've got some decent players. They organised. Um, we just have to, you know, focus on ourselves this week in training and get ready to get back to winning ways at the weekend. Mm. No, I, th I think we've based our success on the intensity that we play at, really, and teams have really, really struggled to deal with it. And that third game in a week, it was the energy levels were just weren't there today. At, um, however much we can talk about it before the games and what we're going to do, I thought everybody was a yard off today, and um, and it reflects on the way the ball's going towards the opposition goal or towards your goal, and. Um, you know, we just uh, didn't get to the levels that we know we can, so we're all a bit disappointed. Um, disappointed for the supporters who travelled a long way, uh, but we have to work hard this week in training and get back to winning ways as soon as possible. No, 
No. Listen, as a manager, you uh, you beat yourself up sometimes. I, I picked the team today because I thought the energy levels would be fine. I thought they'd be really confident. I think after you know a really good result and a great performance in midweek, um, and yet in hindsight, standing here, you should have made three, four changes. I think to to maintain you know some players who haven't played as much, keep their energy levels high. Um, you know. Uh, should have played Jack Payne the way the game went at the end. Somebody who was a little little lad with great creativity and can you know open a can of beans with his left foot. It's um, probably need us what it needed rather than the power of a Samuel or a Nuttall. And yet it's easy in hindsight. You know if we'd have crossed the ball in Nuttall and banged one in with his head, we'd have been seeing one of the good substitution. It's 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 football. But um, give them some credit for defending well, working hard, uh, making life difficult for us. Always looked a threat on a break and. Um, as I said, we have to accept it and move on to the next game. So everybody else has to do it. It's part of football. Um, we've got a third of the season to go. We're, we're in a good position. Um, not as good as we'd like, but a good position. Um, the team just have to reproduce what they've been doing for most of the season. So you've heard a little bit of what the gaffers had to say. You've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. Now we're going to take a listen to what the fans have been saying. Now, if you're, if you're a bit squeamish or you don't like anything nasty or anything, you better close your eyes now because it gets a little bit nasty coming on. First and foremost... Some of the opposition fans, some of the fans from other teams have been chirping away. Someone call the police. Blackburn fans are getting massacred everywhere tonight. So I yes, I am I, I feel for any Blackburn Rovers fan out on the out on the lash tonight or tomorrow or whatever. You've got to keep your heads uh, held low a little bit. Meanwhile, Mark Church said this internet down in Blackburn. Where are all the gobby buggers now? Meanwhile, Daryl Brenty said Plymouth 2, Blackburn Neil, in case the internet is down up north. Jordan Phillips says, cheers for the six points, Bristol. Ha, ha, ha. Let's laugh at Blackburn. Meanwhile, Jack Wright said this. Don't know what's more embarrassing, Rovers' performance or Plymouth think they're going up. Meanwhile, Kyle Dan said, unlucky Blackburn. Cheers for the three points. By the way, Dak is shit. So he did not give himself the best uh, platform to showcase his skills. There was a bit of a teaser going on on uh, Twitter a couple of days before, maybe even it was today or this morning, who is better, Powell or Dak? Uh, it looked from the retweets or whatever, the, the little the voting system that they had on, that Dak was the better one. But today, uh, he did not show himself in good light. And on the other end, up at Wigan, Nick Powell scores one of the goals to give him the free points. Meanwhile, Gareth Davis says this, thanks for keeping it warm for us, Rovers. Must be a Shrewsbury fan. And David Smith said this, well, that was one of the easiest wins of the season so far. Can't remember Blackburn having a shot on target. Their fans were quiet too. I think the most noise they made was celebrating a throw-in. See you next season, Blackburn. That's David Smith. Meanwhile, summer was well, not been much from the player's point of view. Only these two uh, and one is not really a player. David Dunn, sadly unbeaten runs come to an end. Let's get on another starting next week. Players done great and fans been unbelievable. Another great away following today. Meanwhile, Elliot Bennett said this. Superb following. Didn't get the performance it deserved today. Not been able to say that of late. Unfortunately, the unbeaten runs ended. But time to start another one. Safe drive home. As for the Rovers fans, they've been in all kinds of voice. Tom Marshall says this. Frustrated to work so hard to get in front of Shrewsbury, only to go potentially five points behind with less games to overcome it. Masters of our own downfall at times. Meanwhile, Russ Howarth said this. Run comes to an end. Start again. Negativity from some sections of the fans baffles me. Was a pleasure to witness that run. Emma Douglas, the unbeaten run, was always going to come to an end. On to the next game. Northern Rovers said this. First of all, well done Plymouth. They were brilliant today. Rovers had a bad day all over the pitch. An unbeaten run over. Talk of Ewood, Eve said this. Hate to be the negative, but that's a real setback today. Potentially end of our title hopes and gives us a hill to climb for second. Really deflated after today. On to the next one, though. Meanwhile, Andy Neal, 74, said this. Got what we deserve today. Nothing. If you don't make the keeper make a proper save all game, you don't win a game at any level. Long journey home. Meanwhile, the Gamer Moon said this. It's been a great run. We're third in the league. There's a decent gap to fourth. Top two places are up for grabs. Still a long way to go. On to the next game. I'm glad to see some positivity out there. Uh, it's needed at the moment because a lot of the Rovers fans, including myself, I feel a little bit pissed because uh, when you look at the grand scheme of things, Shrewsbury, I thought this period would be a, a bubble bursting period for Shrewsbury. The keeper, Dean Henderson, or whatever his name is, is out for three games. They bring in their backup keeper and they're still doing the job up there. So I don't know when or if that bubble will burst 
And maybe, just maybe, we've got to realize that uh, promotion may be outside of our grasp, the automatic route, and we're going to have to set for the playoffs. And when we say set for the playoffs, it could, this could be, this could be a, an absolute nightmare. If we finish third and go in the playoffs, I, 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 I just don't see it. I don't see us uh, doing a job on uh, on on Bradford or or any of the guys. You know, I just I just feel the mojo would have the 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 champagne would have gone flat. That's that's a good analogy for it. You know, to have to be placed so well to go on such an unbeaten run to be second to have you know the the you know maybe Rovers got a little bit too cocky with their unbeaten run today. They just got found out. Uh, so. What I would think is is what happens the next game? What happens at Oldham? What Rovers show up? Is it going to be a piss poor performance Rovers, or is it going to be a revitalised Rovers with a stick up their backsides uh, and giving it a what for, and maybe put three or four or five past an Oldham side that uh, you know I like Oldham. I think they did a, did did well when I think they beat us also um, uh, early in the season. I think it was Richie Wellens uh, when he was in caretaker uh, managerial role. I think that 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 result got in the job. Um, you know, so they, they, you know, they, they know how we've played and I'm sure they'll be uh, expecting to, to cause us some problems, but I, I, that, that game is monumental to see what we get, what happens in that game. If we could pick up three points, maybe with a few, three or four goals, um, and bounce back. If we bounce back, then maybe just maybe we can get that back into the mix because that game in hand for Shrewsbury, uh, I know it's only two points. But in my eyes, I'm expected to be five points. And five points, we've already played Shrewsbury. So that uh, that possibility of getting those points back are gone. Um, will Shrewsbury and Wigan go the rest of the season unbeaten? I don't know. I think Wigan, have, uh, uh, you know, at the moment, they're looking, they're looking good. They're looking good. Meanwhile, where was I? Patrick Burns said this, 16 more games to go and we're two points off automatic. Let's have some perspective. Meanwhile, Michael Catterall said this, Plymouth... Better side on the day. Rovers predictable and poor going forward. Credit to Naimbi. The lad ran his socks off. Astable was playing well before surprisingly being took off. Meanwhile, Rory Baird, 97. Uh, he said, deserve to lose terrible performance. The players should be ashamed and apologise to the fans that travelled. Dave Parkinson and Wigan. Shrewsbury win. Can't afford to lose again. Unbeaten road. No good with draws. Becky said this. Bad day in the office. We were going to lose eventually. More disappointing after the good midweek win back it to it next week and talk blackburn well glad that's over safe travels to all rovers fans returning home plymouth to rovers nil now let's change topic a little bit uh, a bit of a section that i've been been having really got to before until now the transfer window has shut and a lot of our players are on loan it's uh, called rovers roundup so let's take a look at some of the players in and about on loan at uh, rochdale uh, Sam Hart is on their books now, but he never actually played in this 1-0 defeat. He actually made the bench. There he is. Uh, uh, he didn't actually get any games or minutes today. As for MK Dons with Elliot Ward in the back of their defence there, he started, but they lost. So no clean sheet for that fella. As for Lincoln City, 2-2 draw with Swindon Town, Scott Wharton, he was on the bench. Uh, no minutes this weekend. As for the rest of the action in League One, let's take a look at some of the results. Obviously, we've talked about it throughout the show. Uh, Shrewsbury, 2-1 winners over Bristol Rovers and Wigan. 2-0 win over Gillingham. If I can see it, there it is. As for the, the chasing pack, Bradford, they've been on a stonkingly bad run. Uh, they lost 2-1 to our next opponent, Oldham. Uh, also on a bit of a good run, Rotherham 2-0. They are now up to fifth. Scunthorpe, 3-2 winners. Bit of a goal fest against Fleetwood Town. And also just outside the place, Charlton lost to Oxford 3-2. Gary Bowyer's Blackpool 1-1 one, one with uh, bottom club Berry. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. It's been a bit of a rough weekend as a Rovers fan. But we go again next weekend. So let's get back out there in full voice and support the boys at Ewood against Oldham Athletic. I will be talking more about the Oldham Athletic game in a preview in a couple of days, so stand by for that one. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers 
uh, from around the world. So attention switches now to take on Oldham at Ewood Park next Saturday. What we're going to do is win it. We're going to win it and just hope for the best. Maybe just maybe Shrewsbury and Wigan will stumble a little bit and maybe we can pick up a couple of points and 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 get ourselves right back into it. It's still a few games to go. I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet. Uh, maybe at the end of February we can actually have a good indication of where we're going to be. There's a lot of football to be played. Wigan and Shrewsbury both in some cup competitions still. So that's going to take some... Uh, toll on them extra couple of games um but yeah let's just see wait and see how we get on in the next two or three matches before we start really uh shitting bricks anyway i have enough jibber jabber uh so until next time thumbs up subscribe chavinette thanks again for watching please like share and most importantly hit that subscribe button it'll get you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers but if you want to check out something completely different head over to my other youtube channel you do that by pressing the button right there if you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.